During its lifetime, the Splinter Cell series has had its ups and downs. Gravelly voiced Grumpatron Sam Fisher's first outing was a breath of fresh air when it first hit the gaming scene with its stealth -um of action on the original Xbox back in 2002. And like any successful game, it was milked for all it was worth, but after the fantastic third game, Chaos Theory, the inspiration teat ran dry and the follow-up double agent just felt samey and tired. Then in 2010, Splinter Cell Conviction was released, turning the original gameplay style on its head by pulling the stealth aspect back a bit in favour of stylish action and gigantic words on walls. I thought it was amazing. Fisher was back on form and the excitement I felt when playing it matched the excitement I felt during my first playthrough of the original, so obviously the thought of a 3D version of Splinter Cell got me as excited as Sam in a surprise power cut. Oh, it's gone dark. Trouble is, this new Splinter Cell game for the 3DS isn't new at all. It's a remake of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, and the only real change that's been brought over from Conviction is the gigantic words on walls. So, if you played the game before and know all the shocking plot twists, there's really nothing here to entice you to play through it once more. And sadly, that's only a tiny problem when compared to the other annoyances which plague Splinter Cell 3D and turn one of the best games in the series into a frustrating test of patience. I'm hearing gunfire down there, Fisher. Is everything all right? I suspect that pretty much all of the launch games for the 3DS were slightly rushed, none of them were super standout, and many were incredibly short, but Splinter Cell 3D is the only one I've played so far which actually looks rushed, thanks to the poor presentation, below par 3D, and stunningly awkward controls. One of the main problems here is that Splinter Cell 3D is too complicated a game to work well on such a small handheld console like the 3DS. With its tiny screens and single thumbstick, the hardware is already working against the game from the off. The whole point of the Splinter Cell games is to survey your surroundings and smoothly pick off your targets without being spotted, but with this version it's such a struggle to manoeuvre around the levels that your master of stealth instead fumbles around like a drunken blind man, setting off alarms and alerting enemies at almost every turn. Ah. Ugh. The absence of the thumbstick which would control the camera normally has meant that the developers have had to transfer the control of this to the A, B, X and Y face buttons of the 3DS, and this just makes the whole game fall down instantly. It's such a struggle to easily look around that half the time you will mission around like a horse wearing blinkers, so the majority of your game time will consist of you unfairly falling off ledges or blowing your cover because Sam's huge character model has blocked off half of the screen. This also makes aiming and firing your weapons incredibly difficult. Most of the time when I was in combat I just had to stand still and hope I didn't die because moving and aiming at the same time is nigh on impossible. And before you say, oh well you wouldn't get into combat situations anyway if you were playing the game right, that is my actual point. The poor handling of the conversion means you actually can't play the game the way it was intended to be played. And it's not just the camera controls which suffer on this port. Splinter Cell games are always chock full of complex gadgets and awesome weaponry, and using them has always been a bit tricky to get the hang of, even on the big screen. But here on the 3DS, instead of simplifying things, Ubisoft have just crammed all of your weapons, gadgetry, and interaction commands onto the touchscreen and created a confusing, cluttered nightmare of a menu. When everything is so close together and so tiny, it's incredibly easy to equip the wrong item when you're in a rush, but the worst thing is that you will have to take your eyes off the main screen every time you have a fiddle down below, -er. so again it's easy to be caught unaware and unprepared by a wandering bad guy who will take great pleasure in gunning you down, causing you to have to sit through an incredibly long and boring load time before you can jump into the action again. It's great and even impressive that Ubisoft have managed to include pretty much the whole original game here, along with all the cutscenes, voice acting and even a couple of new features. 
The graphics are okay, although a little basic at times, and it's very hard to judge what's dark and what's light. The audio and voice acting is great, but it all sounds a little glitchy at times, with intermittent pops and breaks in the character's speech, and sadly my overall experience was not enjoyable in the slightest. The truth is, the game borders on unplayable, and that is gutting, because I'm a massive fan of the franchise, and it would have been great to get a truly decent adult game in amongst all the launch titles for the 3DS. I'm sorry, Fisher, but you deserved better. Yeah, 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 yeah.